So WordPress uses five different major post types by default, post, page, attachment, revisions, and nav menus. Starting with WordPress 3.0, developers gain the ability to define our own post types called custom post types. Custom post types really unlock the potential in WordPress uh, for content management. You can easily have users enter custom details for books, portfolio items, lesson plans, files, virtually anything you can think of can be made into a post type and integrated into your site. Since the admin, uh, advent of post types, many plugins have utilized them for these purposes and more, and you can easily incorporate them into your own site. So in this lesson, you'll learn about custom post types and taxonomies. We'll go over how to register post types and taxonomies, the commonly used parameters, the labeling system, permalinking options, and show a practical example of a post type in use. Then we'll give an overview of the post type templating system and show you how to add them into your queries and your menus. So the first thing we'll do to get custom post types added to your WordPress site is create a wrapper plugin. And this is a good habit to get into when you want to create custom functionality for your site that doesn't necessarily go with your theme or the look of your site. Um, and since post types have to do with the data on your site, uh, we'll house all of this code in a separate plugin, which means that when you want to change the theme or look of your site, all of your post type data will be safe and you won't have to refactor all of that code. You'll just have to change how you deal with the templating. So if you want to learn more about how the WordPress plugin API works and, and how I've registered this plugin with WordPress, you'll just take a look at the WordPress Codex plugin API for more information on that. So what I've done is I've created a class to hold all of this code, uh, which is another good habit to get into because it allows you to create much simpler function names and, and know that you're safe. Um, if you have a unique class name, then your function names within um, can be very simple, like install and init and these sorts of things that I've used, um, among other reasons to, to start using an object-oriented um, procedure with your WordPress plugins. So in our construct function, first we register an activation hook so that when the plugin is activated, we call the functions within the install function, which include init, which I'll go through in a second, and flush rewrite rules. And I'll, I'll go through the reason that you want to flush the rewrite on activation um, in a little while. Uh, but the important thing is here is that th this will fire only when the plugin's activated just the first time or you deactivate and reactivate the plugin it'll it'll fire so you see that we've added the init function within our class to the init action in wordpress so that when a wordpress initializes these functions will fire and our first one is register post types, which is the same name as the WordPress function that we're, we're getting at here. And this is where the post type actually gets registered with WordPress. So you have a labels array, and I'll go through these uh, in detail. And you have an arguments array, and then which the arguments array actually includes the labeling, and then we call the WordPress function register post type for the name of our function. I'm sorry, the name of our post type, and we add the arguments to it. The taxonomies function is very similar, um, basically a mirror where we have our labeling, we have our arguments, which includes the labels, some uh, actually very similar arguments, and then this time we will use the name of our taxonomy. We will add it, we will tell it what post type we want to add it to, and then we want to add arguments. So in theory, you could actually add this to a regular post type, um, post or page or, or one of the built-in versions, but here we're going to add it to our custom post type, and then of course we call the arguments. So next let's go up and take a look at the parameters used with these functions. And so first we will take a look at the labels. And so each of these functions has a set of labels that you can customize for your particular post type. So 
Um, you can see here it, it gets a little bit redundant, but you just need to go through each of these and um, make an appropriate label for the appropriate section. So see this in action um, where you see add new book here, same kind of thing you'll see on your add new book page. So um, maybe if you had a portfolio post type, then it may say um, add new uh, portfolio item or something along those lines. And, and that, that, that will differ depending on your post type and the application. For now, I'm going to use a real simple one here. So we're looking at books. And so you can see uh, the view section, you'll have a view search, you'll have a search, and each of these will be represented in WordPress admin somewhere. Now on the arguments array that will uh, be called in the actual function, you have the labels that we just set up um, being fed as an, argu as a, as an array. Um, we have the hierarchical option which essentially, um, you can think of it like it's either like posts or it's like pages, okay? So um, it, with pages in WordPress, you can set them up so that you have subpages, whereas posts don't really work like that. Um, and you, don't, you can't have a hierarchical post section. So um, if, if you need to have one post type be a sub of another post type, then you want hierarchical to be true and otherwise false. So with books, it wouldn't really make sense. So I'm, I went with false here. Now you need to tell WordPress what types of um, options you want your post type to support. And these are the, the things that will actually show up in your editor that you can then edit. So here I've chosen title, editor, custom fields, and thumbnails, because those are the really, you know, the important things that I want to be able to use in my post type and my templates. And you want to take a look at the codex for a full list of all of the options here, uh, as with all of these. So the options to support that I've chosen here are the title, editor, custom fields, and thumbnail. So title is what you would expect, where uh, you just get a, a a slot to enter your title in. The editor is the WYSIWYG editor that holds the content of your post. Custom fields allows you to add custom fields to your post type and um, this is one that you'll generally will want to use as uh, most post types you'll want to customize, um, add, add a couple of custom parameters and that sort of thing to use throughout your site. And then last, the thumbnail option is what gives you the ability to use the featured images um, section of WordPress themes. And to see what that looks like in the WordPress book in the post type. The title is up here. This is your content editor. So this is the general editor. And Featured images is will be added here, and then this is a custom field that I added using a plugin. Um, and so um, I just made a custom field called ISBN, and it'll take a text field and it'll save it in the database associated with this particular book. So um, I'm going to add a new book, and I'm just going to call it demo book, and we will add some just demo content. Um, a little ISBN number here. And this will actually be our custom taxonomy. We'll go over that later. I'll just publish this so we can see what we get. And look at the list of books and you'll find our new book here along with the ones that I had entered earlier. Get your standard quick edit type view and everything else here that comes automatically with your post type. So the next is the taxonomies. And um, so here you need to tell your post type which taxonomies you want it to support out of the box. And the custom taxonomy is not added here. It's actually added um, in a later place and I'll, I'll show you that. Right now, I actually want to include my books inside the regular WordPress.